horror fans, once again, it's the Horror Minds of Money G. Yes, I'm going to do my recap of last night's pretty good episode of The Walking Dead. Yes. <laughs> now, this episode is titled Warning Signs, and uh, we do get a lot of warning signs as the uh, peace that Rick is trying to maintain between the communities is tweeting on a thread <laughs> and uh, it doesn't help when the episode begins where we see a bunch of walkers walking around this recovery center and uh, they're chowing down on some poor soul and we find out later on it's Justin uh, apparently he was he had died of some type of a shot as we saw in the last episode he approached somebody and knew, obviously knew who it was but they killed him and now he's reanimated as a walker now, in the background, we actually see something uh, in the background that says, Final Warning. Uh-oh, there go the warning signs. Now, things don't get any better when we see... Um, things don't seem to be going well. I uh, almost jumped ahead again. Uh, Rick and Michonne are having a nice time. They decide to take a day off from working on the bridge. They decide to have a nice family day. Uh, they take Judith to go see Sadiq because she was having some coffee, and they're having a nice good time. But things are not so nice for Maggie uh, in the hilltop. When they try to deliver the food that Maggie promised them, she's approached by several former walk uh, saviors. And uh, the guy named Judd, he actually takes a uh, piece of tomato. But a couple of the other level-minded saviors decide to say, hey, thanks for the food, let you be on the way, we'll take it out of Judd's cut. But it doesn't get any better when we actually see the Walker Justin appear on the road and everything starts to sketch out terribly. A huge fight breaks out at the campsite uh, that Rick finally quells. They also start to blame Anne, calling her garbage lady <laughs> and all this other stuff. Uh, she takes it rather hard because she seems to can't find anybody other than Gabriel. But we'll talk about Anne later on in a moment. Uh, after Rick quells the uh, little soiree, he and Daryl have a nice conversation and uh, ask Daryl, did he kill Justin? And of course, he knows he didn't do it because Daryl would just would have killed him right in front of everybody and wouldn't have thought twice about it. Uh, so now we have a mystery going on our hands because we have several missing sailors and now we have somebody that killed Justin. Who could it be? I'm pretty sure we'll find out later. <laughs> so... They decide to go pair up and decide to go on ahead and look for the missing persons. Uh, we see, uh, then we get this nice pairing off between Maggie and Cindy. Yeah, you remember Cindy from Oceanside. <laughs> I haven't seen her in a while. She shows up in this episode and uh, they run into this house full of walkers. Uh, they decide to go on ahead and stop the banging because it's attracting walkers to the campsite. So they decide to go on ahead and uh, take out the walkers. There's some little trouble there because Cindy tries her best not to get uh, eaten by the walkers. But she falls on a crackety uh, wooded steps. The walkers bust out. Luckily, uh, Carol and Rick and the others uh, dispatch the walkers very easily. But there's a foot. Another person has gone missing. It's a rat. It seems like uh, Bertice, Bert Beatrice, I think that's what her name was, Said her and a rat were attacked. Someone knocked her out, and now a rat's going missing. What's going on here? <laughs> now, the necessary parties with no saviors decide to go into this tent and have a private meeting. Uh, I love when Jerry claims up when they do decide to, uh, if once they do find the guilty party, what they're going to do. It just uh, They're going to do a Gregory or a Negan, <laughs> meaning that if they find the captured party, will they do a uh, uh, Gregory meaning that to execute him or to do a nigga put him in prison and I thought that was pretty interesting and uh, Rick and Carol have a nice conversation about uh, what's life's going to be like because the communities are hanging on by a thread and Rick admits to the fact that he would hit times he would like nothing better than to go down and kill Negan and kill the rest of the saviors but in this new society all lives matter hmm well you've heard that uh, series before uh, meanwhile, Maggie and Dara are walking by, and Maggie are having this conversation about, you know, what you uh, what we remember from the previous season that Maggie did not agree with Rick's choice to let Negan live. Uh, but then they come across dead walkers, and we see a bolt, and Dara knows I know who's doing the killing. Uh oh, who is doing the killing? 
We'll have to find out soon enough. <laughs> now, we get two reveals in this episode. Two of them I did not expect coming. Uh, I guess we could have realized. Uh, we get Anne. She's back at the junkyard, and she's snooping around. We don't know what she's doing. She goes to this concealed box, and we see a walkie-talkie. What? And she speaks to this person saying, Come in, come in. I know you're if it rains. I saw the helicopter last night. Ooh, that helicopter. Well, I told you that was coming back into play. And then we get this man that comes over, and he uses some type of encryptive, some type of encryption, encrypted uh, saying, What do you have? An A or a B? And she says, Neither. It's just me. What's an A or a B? What in the world is going on here? Uh, it isn't long before Gabriel, who followed her and confronts her, and says, It's you. You're the one that's taking the people. And she admits it. Yes, I took them for supplies. She says, There's a place there that we wouldn't have to, we would, it's far away from here, and we would have everything that we need. I want you to come with me. Now, as tempting as Gabriel would like to do it, he says he can't do it because he had lied to Rick. Uh, previously, he had told Rick that uh, Anne was at watch, but uh, he had lied to Rick saying that he and Anne were on watch even though he had left earlier and Anne was there. And so he tells us, I got to tell Rick. And then Anne says, you know what, I'm so disappointed. I could have sworn you were a B. And then clubs him inside the head. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Who is Anne working for? Now, I have two possibilities. Now, obviously, most people will think, well, maybe it's the Whisperers, because we know that they have two groups of people. They have the Alphas and the Betas. Uh, but they're a fair group. They're not not the type of people that actually would have helicopters, so it'd probably be somebody from the Commonwealth. Remember those people? I'm pretty sure we're hearing more from them this season. <laughs> Oh, but we got one more scene before we get to the reveal of who's killing the saviors. Uh, Carol and Rick are are ambushed by two saviors, Judd and this other guy. They put Carol at knife point saying they want the guns. <laughs> Rick says you're not going to have them. Carol easily gets this knife out that she had hidden. You got to give Carol this one's a badass. She's got weapons everywhere. And she actually, instead of kills them, she actually stabs him in the shoulder. The other guy easily surrenders and Rick says... And the uh, judge says, why didn't you just kill me? And Carol says, that's because all lives matter. <laughs> and Rick tells him, go get yourself to your firm and get yourself checked out. And I thought that was a nice scene because the old Carol would have easily killed both of them without, without hesitation. And that conversation that Rick had with her obviously pulled some weight because in order for this to work, everyone has to get along. Even if you don't like the saviors or if the saviors don't like people from either of the other communities. But you all have to get along. What's wrong with that? And so we finally get to that same place that we saw in the beginning of the episode, that recycling center. Now, obviously before, uh, Cindy told Maggie while they were walking away that that was the place they used to have where they lived at before the saviors came. And at that same place right now with the final warning, and we see that it's the Oceanside people. We see Cindy along with Beatrice, and they have a rat kneel down. Uh, it was finally explained that Justin killed uh, Beatrice's husband, and a rat killed Beatrice's brother. Uh, it's And they want their revenge, and everyone's kind of shocked, but not really shocked. And she says, why do you want to do this? And then uh, Cindy says... It's because what you did. You killed Gregory. <laughs> you gave us the okay that it's okay to kill these people. We must have our revenge. And poor Rat, you feel sorry for her. She's begging for her life. No, no, no. We're all one group now. I'm not like that anymore. I'm not like that. And you think that Maggie and Daryl are going to stop them. But they don't. <laughs> uh, unfortunately... Beatrice tells, I mean, not Beatrice, Cindy tells uh, Eric to repeat what you told me before you killed my 11-year-old brother. And she said, no exceptions. And obviously, must have shot him in the head. And then that's when Maggie and Daryl just simply turn their backs on a rat. They walk away. 
and in the foreground we see the we hear the harpoon gun going and a rat falls dead on her face oh boy it's not going to is this piece is not going to last long so we end the show with Daryl and Maggie saying that well we tried Rick's way uh it's not going to work so what you going to do now Maggie says it's time to visit Negan you know what that means <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this was a nice episode, a little change of pace. Nice to see uh, that the story is now moving along. Uh, we now only have two episodes left before uh, uh, Andrew Lincoln is leaves the show. Uh, I really don't know what they're going to do with Maggie's character, but uh, according to what we were, according to what we were told from the previous or last, it's only two more episodes before Andrew Lincoln does his final performance as Rick Grimes, and we still don't know what's happening. Obviously. Whatever's going to happen is has to do with this uh, community that he's trying to create. And something bad is going to happen, and we don't know if he's going to disappear, are they going to kill him off, or is he going to get turned by a bit by a walker and they have to kill him off. There, there's a lot of things in play here. Now, as for the uh, uh, the ocean side thing, I, I, I kind of guess they did it just to advance the storyline, but again, there's no weight into that reveal of what happened because we really don't know that much about the, these people from Oceanside other than the fact that uh, they used to live in this recovery center. The saviors come, took all the men, the women uh, took off and hid somewhere where uh, we didn't see them. Like I said, we haven't seen them since at least since probably before last season finale. We haven't seen Cynthia in a while. And this is a problem I have sometimes with the as I was saying, this is a problem I have with The Walking Dead sometimes. You know, we get these characters that we don't see for like almost six or seven or nine to ten episodes, and all of a sudden, bang, they're in this huge focal point in the storyline. Now, I understand it's it's supposed to drive the narrative and uh, supposed to have some type of dramatic effect, but it's not there because we don't see them enough to make us care. And you would think they would learn their lesson last season uh, doing this, but what are you going to do? I mean, it's it, it it's not bad. It's just that they need to decide if they're going to use characters, at least use characters that we care about, not somebody that we only see every once in a while. So, my horror fans, what do you thought about last night's episode of The Walking Dead? Did you like those two reviews? <laughs> do you think, what? do you have any idea what's going to happen to Rick Grimes? Uh, leave your comments down in your comment section below and tell me what you thought about last night's episode of the walking dead well that's my video for today guys hope you did enjoy and if you did please give it a thumbs up because it does help the channel out a lot and once again this is your first time here that's right hit that subscriber button ring that notification bell that way you can come and enjoy the horror experience with me the horror miser money g and as always all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G, and always remember Horror Rules. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you guys later. I'm out. One, two,